Hey everyone, what is up? We are here for episode 62, season 2, episode 41 of Nonsense Brewery. This is Daniel and CISO. I have returned. Uh, a little hiatus last week, uh, lots of stuff going on. Um, but we're, we're here for our November 4th release. i um, excited to have three hosts. Um, uh, my, my good friend, uh, Jerome and Alex, they'll introduce themselves in a bit. And, uh, I will, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Jerome, what do you got? To, what do you got to drink today? Hey man, I've got, uh, some wine, which, uh, pairs nicely with, with, uh, a story that I'm going to tell, um, later in this podcast, but it is Oliver wine. I don't know if you guys have had this before, but it's called Oliver. It's like a sweet red wine. I'm not typically into wines very much but uh you know it's, it's what i had so that's what i'm gonna be sipping on today alex what about you uh today i'm drinking decaf coffee and uh, uh fizz and company seltzer so back to you dan <sighs> i feel like love that's it. your go-to man i hate he it likes no <laughs> don't say you he love it. it i hate it he likes i love it. it i said he I likes it. it um and you know in our newsletter though if, if anybody's ever checked it i the first ones, I only had like a beer, a wine, and something like that, and then I've expanded it to all kinds of drinks because what I want is like people should be cool with drinking with whatever they want to drink. You know, I think that's the message, even though we've got, you know, young mugs, okay. a pint. You that's can fill fair. up a pint with some seltzer water, you know. It doesn't have that's to fair. be, you know, White Claw. We're all, um, we're all inclusive. All inclusive. I, I mean, like the message. All that stuff I like has the a messaging. time and a place. You know, all that t- stuff has a time and a place. Anyway, speaking of that, I'm in my uh, U.S. Open Cup. I just got some, you know, straight vodka. Um, I will be finishing all of this. You're I'm joking? Kidding. No, you're not. <laughs> I had <laughs> okay. to say it. I had to say it for the for the. For the I don't Dude, even know. Dude, you you for freaked fun. me out just now. Holy crap! This is a this is a water. Um, I don't think it's gone through what's that fancy process osmosis, but it, it has gone through some kind of uh, filtering. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Like there's like a yeah, Alex knows what I'm talking about. I'm gonna have to Google I know what you're this. Talking about. I, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I yeah, I guess yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just drinking some water uh, for different reasons. Um, but uh, welcome back to I guess you know we've got world topics, all kinds of conversations. A little bit of travel. Jerome on the last episode talked about wanting to talk with a few more of us. We can't get everyone on, but he did have some travel to talk about. I do as well. We're talking about flight cal- can- cancellations. We're talking about fast cars. We're talking about all kinds of things, and, uh, Ooh, and we'll get okay. we'll get into it. But before we do that, you know, uh, anyone who uh, isn't acquainted, you're running across this for the first time. We've got uh, we're on YouTube. Uh, Anchor helps us deploy or whatever you want to call it to a bunch of podcasting services. So Spotify, Apple, um, what is it called? Overcast, Google. Um, we're in a lot of places. Thanks to them. Amazon, not yet. Anchor needs to make the integration to Amazon because who wants to do double the work? Um, and eventually Spotify apparently is going to do video podcasts, which, um, Oh, I uh, saw that. Yeah. And I'm trying to get onto that, but anyway, this is nonsense brewery episode 62. I feel like I, I went all over the place. What do you guys want to hit first, Jerome? <laughs> I know you uh, had Toronto on your mind. Um, no, you I want did. To kick it off but with a, before we a travel, okay. Yeah, yeah, but you know, just very quick before we get into Toronto and, and the travel part of the podcast, um, I read this interesting article the other day that YouTube was updating its like monetization policies and stuff, and part of what they talked about was how up until just like a week ago when they updated their policy, they would like derank videos that had alcohol in the first like five minutes or 30 seconds or something of the video. And the entire time I was reading this article, I was like, wow, that's like our entire shtick. Like that's our thing. We literally start the podcast off by introducing what type of alcohol we're drinking. And I was like, well, damn, man. We've been, maybe, we've been maybe we need to read five months. Like, yeah, 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 for real. Well, you know, I kind of want to stay on this for a second because, like, you know, what's interesting is, like, you would think, okay, it makes sense, but we explicitly, when we upload the videos, it gives the option of, like, is this audience for kids or not? And we say, obviously not. That's true. And, and then uh, I don't think we get that age specific, but, you know, it would make sense that for 
any video that falls into that category, this is a non-factor. Like it's not a factor. So I don't know if yeah, that's policy. Fair. So hopefully it wasn't like that. You know, if somebody from YouTube wants to jump into the comment section know, and man, let us know what's up. You know, I think we'll we'll see in the, the Google uh, AI in the listening next, to us next month, month or two months or whatever how uh, how our videos perform because they just adjusted their monetization policy to like remove that. Uh, oh. So that's not like a criteria anymore um, that gets flagged for whatever. So I don't know. We'll we'll see how the next month or two goes in terms of performance. But uh, yeah, I didn't want to spend too much time on that. We can jump into into Toronto, but I'm gonna go ahead and warn you guys. This is a long story. So are you are you guys ready to buckle in and just just hear it? I think Rob's so. Strapped. We, we, yeah. Let's let's go. Let's get it. All right. So it all started back in 1996. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm effing around. Um, but so I, I recently went to Toronto, right? Um, and it is very difficult to travel internationally right now, uh, you know, especially with all the things going on. Like you got to get special uh, like paperwork. You got to get like COVID test and, and all sorts of stuff, right? So we looked up all this information. What exactly do we need to go to Toronto? And basically, you have to have a uh, proof of vaccination. So you got to show your, like, vaccine card somehow. And then you also have to have, in addition to that, you have to have a negative COVID test. And then in addition to that, you also have to fill out, like, this COVID questionnaire um, and submit it to the Canadian government and say, like, you know, basically just – saying yes i attest that i'm being truthful and like i don't have covid that's essentially what it is but within that there are like even more rules so like for example with the negative covid test your negative covid test can't be the rapid test it has to be like the 24 to 48 hour one i think it's called like pcr or prc or something like that um and it has to be within 72 hours of your departure Okay, so I'm, I'm going to give you guys a little uh, a little math question here. So my flight takes off on I'm nervous. Saturday. Wait, wait, wait. I'm nervous. Yeah, Saturday. My flight's supposed to take off Saturday at 6 a.m. from uh, RDU, which is the Raleigh-Durham airport. Okay, Saturday at 6 a.m. 72 <laughs> hours prior, but you have to give yourself that... 24 to 48 hour buffer window, whatever. But forget that for a second. What is the earliest time that I could take my COVID test? So what is 72 hours before? What, what? Say that one more time. 6 a.m. Thursday. One more day. No. Mm. Yeah. Yep. So Wednesday. Friday, yeah. Friday, Thursday. 6 okay. a, yeah. 6 a.m. Wednesday. 6 a.m. Wednesday. Right? Well, because... I'm not uh, I don't know, math. Well, yeah, you're not like, math. I'm, I'm writing. The, I'm writing this down, Jerome, and uh, <laughs> like right here, it says, uh, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you write the Thursday like that, that's funny. Anyway, well, that's, okay, so that's what this question so, yeah, is leading to. Oh, what the fuck? Seventy-two going hours. <laughs> so like twenty twenty-four hours would be Friday six a.m. Then forty-eight would be Thursday six a.m. Seventy-two would be Wednesday six a.m. I'm yeah. more worried about like something's going to happen and I'm not going to get my results back. So I want to take it as early as possible, right? So I decide I'm going to go in 10 a.m. on Wednesday. It's within that 72-hour window. I should be good. So we go in. Barb and I both get our uh, our tests at 10 a.m. on on Wednesday, okay? We we get our results. Everything's good. Perfect. Then – um. Friday rolls around, and I'm, I'm trying to check into the flight using the uh, the Delta app. And it's not letting me check in. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, this this doesn't make sense. Um, and, you know, part of me assumed for a second that it was because I've got the Indian passport and they've got to check the green card and all that stuff. Um, but then, like, it let it also wouldn't let me check Barbara in as well. And that felt weird. Then I texted my sister and I was like, yo, can you check into the flight? And Because she just got her U.S. citizenship, has a U.S. passport, all that stuff. Um, 
And she was able to check in fine online, like mm. no issues at all. So now I'm starting to sweat because I'm like, something's not right here. So I'm doing, I'm like doing a bunch of research and I see this fine print on the Canadian government website that specifically says, if you have a connecting flight, then it's got to be 72 hours before the connecting flight, like the flight that goes from the U.S. to Canada, not so the Russia. original flight. Yeah, so I'm like checking the flights and stuff. So we're going from here to New York to Toronto. So I'm like, oh, shit, when does the New York flight leave? And it leaves, swear to God, I'm not making this up. All true story. 11 a.m. The New York flight leaves, yes, at 10.50 a.m. I fucking missed it by one out by 50 minutes. I miscalculated. And so now I'm like, what is, what well, is I don't time? know what to do. What is time? Well, so they're not going to let me check it. They're not going to let me on the flight. You know what I right. mean? So, so I'm freaking out. I'm like, what do I do? I'm, you know, I'm talking to my mom and I'm like, mom, I don't know what to do. She is like, just go spend, uh, they have a thing as like, it's called like a rapid PCR, yep. which it's still different from a rapid test because it's not like an, an antigen test, but and it that test the rapid PCR would work, and it only takes like three hours for you to get the results, nice. but it costs like a hundred dollars per person. And Damn. she get was in. just like, I found a, yeah, she was like, I found a clinic near you. Just go do that, and it won't be a big deal. Like whatever, just do it. Um, it, but you know, Barbara was like, what if? We just asked Delta if there's an earlier flight that they can put us on. And I was like, okay, well, that's a good idea. Let's see if there is. Um, and they found one flight that they could put us on ever so slightly earlier. Instead of going from here to New York, it would go here to Atlanta, and then it would leave Atlanta at 9.58. So literally gives me two minutes grace period. And apparently once you're checked in for that flight, like you're good. Bruh. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um can you like so we were like all right hold up hold up you need to yeah. diagram this out and make it into a painting and we'll sell this painting we will sell this painting like <laughs> NFT, copies bro. of it all right yeah i guess we can NFT. do an nft but like we need to like show like i know the craziness i need of like this a, in a diagram yes you have to show these times dude it'd be such a graphic i don't i know you're not like a, a we drawer, are just but, like, getting started i'm, I'm telling we you we are all just right. getting started holy dude. shit okay. so Toronto this, time. That's what I'm going to call this section. Yeah. Toronto time. So they uh, they get us booked on that flight. Originally, we booked everything. Like, my sister booked everything with her points. It's so, like we didn't spend any money on anything. Um, and Delta was gracious enough. Shout out, Delta. To, uh, to give us, like, rebook us on that earlier flight. So, again, we're like, all right, dope. This is going to work. So... We get to the airport at 4 a.m. Saturday morning. We get dropped off because, uh, you know, international flight, TSA is down like a bunch of employees. You're supposed to get to airports early nowadays, whatever. TSA pre, bro. Um, TSA pre. I don't hop have on. TSA pre, hop man. On, hop on that because you're I need an investment it. I need banker, it. bro. Mm -hmm. Like, Hop on that. You're right. I, I need to get TSA pre And get it reimbursed check, with a credit card. I, Life hack. That's true. That's true. Actually, I think uh, I think the company I'm going to go work for they they will in fact pay for it. So there you go. I need to you know try to get that I, clear to membership too if you can. Then clear, might as well. Clear still. Yeah. Oh yeah, or like uh, what's the what's the it's international clear, one? Global Entry or something? Oh yeah, that's is true. Is it called yeah. Clear? No, no, that's Global Entry. Yeah. I'll okay. also get that one. Um, yeah. But so so yeah, we get to the airport at 4 a.m. Right. We're trying to check in, and it still will not let us check in. Like. It, it, Barbara's Barbara's stuff is fine. The lady has got her checked in, literally has printed out her boarding pass and handed it to her, all perfectly fine. I'm having so much trouble, they can't get me checked in. And the lady looks at me and she's like, did you fill out your electronic travel authorization form? And I was like, yeah, that's the, the like little app that you had to fill out the questionnaire and send it to the Canadian government, right? And she was like, yeah, but, you know, did you, like, pay money for that? Like, it should have been, like, $7. And I was like, no. And she's looking at me, and she's like, well, you like, it's basically like a visa. Like, you, you have to have it for a non-U.S. citizen to enter Canada. 
And I was like, I didn't know that. Like, no one, no one told me. There's too much fine print, man. First off, no one reads the fine print. There's too much fine print. And so I didn't know I was supposed to fill out this form. But the lady at the gate is like, oh, normally it only takes 20 minutes to get your confirmation. Um, just fill it out now, pay the money, and you'll be good to go. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. Fill it out, pay the seven bucks, and we're sitting there. We literally at the counter still. Just wait 20 minutes, nothing. No email. Um, and the lady gets our hopes up, and she's like, like 30 minutes later, she's like, oh, the uh, the confirmation came through. I can check you in now. And I was like, great. She tries to do it, and she's like, can you just give me the confirmation number? And I was like, I don't have a confirmation number. And she, and she goes, they should have emailed it to you. And I was like, I've literally been standing here the entire time. I've told you I have not gotten an email from them. I literally have gotten nothing. And – she she's just like, OK, well, it won't let me check you in until until um, you get that confirmation number. So we're still just waiting. That lady has to leave to, like, go check in some other flights or whatever. We're rotating through, like, every single gate agent that is at, in the airport. You know what I'm saying? Like, every single person has come through us. And for for whatever reason, no one can get me checked in. So three hours later. We missed the flight. Can't go. Mm. And uh, and see, so you texted me on this day, and you were like, you were like, "How's Toronto?" And I told you, I'm oh. not going to say because I just want to tell the story on the podcast. I was still here. I was still at home <laughs> because no I did. Way, I, 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 bro. Yeah, dude. No way. So then, um, so then That's they crazy. were again gracious enough to rebook us. Um, and they rebooked us for Sunday night, okay? Uh, Sunday at like 5 p.m. or something, um, and we, we go home. Now, for those of you that have been listening closely, can either of you tell me the issue with rebooking the flight for Sunday night? Anyone? Uh, Anyone? COVID. COVID, bro. One Just more time? That. Yes. COVID. Yes, the <laughs> fucking like COVID time. test expired. So now i got to go get another new COVID test. But we were like, last the first time we took it, it took like 20 hours for us to get it. So we were like, let's just do it again. It's only going to take 20 hours. Like, it's only, you know, 8 a.m. on Saturday. We'll have it Sunday morning. We'll be fine to, uh, to make this flight Sunday you night. You were wrong. You were wrong. 100% I was wrong. <laughs> of course I was fucking wrong, bro. Of course. <laughs> So we go get the COVID test. Of course, Saturday night, that, that confirmation number comes through, so that's fine. Then we go and get the COVID test. The COVID test results don't come back. So I'm, like, sitting there on the phone with Delta, and again, I'm, like, begging them. Like, can you rebook us again, please? Because I can't make it because my COVID test didn't come back in time. And they're like, sorry, it's too close to the time of your flight you have to go to the airport in person. And I'm like, so I go again. I was just there on Saturday. I go again Sunday to the airport. I'm there two hours again, and they rebook me. But this time the problem is that uh, they don't have any flights available on Monday. So they book me for Tuesday night. And again, I'm like, that's too far. I'm going to have to get another COVID test. Oh. And, uh, and you know, this is where the magic that is mother's kicks in. My mom, at this point in time, she's, like, on her flight to Toronto. She's about to – she's, like, mid-air, but she's connected via Wi-Fi, and she's, like, texting me. And uh, she's, like, let me text uh, text Delta. Like, do the, the Delta chat, you know? There's a, ch and, there's a chat on iMessage now. Yeah, it's sick. Exactly. Dude, it's dope. It's so cool. It's That's so sick. cool. But – like she's chatting with them in the time that it took for me to drive from the airport to go home, like a 20 minute drive. Um, she had gotten my flights that were Tuesday rebooked for Monday morning. I don't know how she did it, um, but she was able to basically bully Delta into forcing us into a, an earlier flight. And so finally, finally, Monday morning, we go on the plane and we finally get to Toronto. Sheesh, bro. And I mean, at, was... that, at that point, it's just like, should we even talk about Toronto? 
Because if, it, if, it's know, just gonna, right? if it's just gonna keep going it, bad, bro, I don't, I don't want to hear it, man. He was literally, he was well, literally running through the six with his woes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so okay. Did then, you go on a little um, run when you on Toronto? I would have, I would have put my headphones in, bro. I would have gone to, outside and I would have played that song and I would have ran. I would have ran, bro. No, man, I'm not, I'm not a runner, but I did try to go on a little bit of a like a bender, you know, just try to get <laughs> suited up real quick. Jeez, but. But um, so we we get to Toronto and like Toronto's cool all that. Um, but the first night like we go to this like not like a super fancy restaurant but like a, a decently nice restaurant to eat. That was basically all we had time to do the first day. Um, and that night, man, I was like, my all I did we came back from dinner. I drank some tea and I went to bed. And um, all night long, my stomach was absolutely killing me. I like. I was going to the bathroom like every hour it felt like and my stomach just hurt so bad. And the next morning I wake up and I'm like telling everybody, I'm like, oh, man, because at this point everyone's there. My mom, dad, sister, me, Barbara, everyone's there. Um, and I'm like telling everyone like, yo, like my stomach was hurting so bad. Like did anyone else feel this way? Did, did, did I get food poisoning, whatever? And my dad just starts cracking up and I was like – what's so funny? Like, what's, what's your deal? And he was like, yeah, well, you know, y you don't clean up after yourself. So I was cleaning up your, uh, your tea last night and, um, you drank constipation tea. Oh, I was like, like, Jerome, you're on one, bro. I'm that's, that's all I'm going to say. I was you like, are on one. What? You're on one. Dude. Well, when, when, when you said like your dad was cleaning up your tea, I thought he meant he was like cleaning up your shit. Like, <laughs> No, 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 no. He was just cleaning up like the uh, the trash that I left out on the counter. Oh man, no. But <laughs> Jerome, I was just like, I think, I think there are a couple of things, you know, just to, to kind of add some some more voices to a conversation. Not that I, I I don't like hearing your voice, bro. It's like first of all, you gotta find out what your mom did, and and and, and learn it. So because you know she ain't always gonna be around. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're gonna I know. Solve, I'm gonna be a mom one you, day. You, you're gonna have to solve those problems. Yeah, dude. Somebody's gonna be looking for you. Um, and then the second thing, bro, your dad's teaching you a lesson there too, bro. Clean up, you, like, detective work, bro. Detective work, Clean right up. there. Because that could have that could have revealed all the answers, <laughs> oh, God, bro. That's hilarious. Right then and there, if you would have drunk, if I, I feel like if you would have seen what you had, immediately you yak, you yak. I would have known. You know, I would have known. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. dude, I mean, I'm not 100%. saying I'm as like, but I I totally I I agree, dude. I think it's like. I can give some examples about the Charles well, book. Anyway, continue. Continue with yeah. what you're going with. No, so, you know, I was just going to say, outside of that, like, Toronto was great. Some fantastic food in Toronto, man. Um, they, you know, it, it really doesn't feel that much different from most of the states. Like, you know, you got big buildings. Uh, we went to the CN Tower. Uh, we saw the Raptors Stadium. We saw the FC Toronto Stadium. Um, very, like, very cool city, especially the food. I thought specifically, I thought the food was, was fantastic. I do personally think, and it might have been, like, the types of places we were going, but it felt really expensive. Like, maybe it's just, like, because Toronto's, like, probably comparable to, like, New York City, so you're paying kind of, like, uh, like a premium to if you just went to anywhere regular in Canada, but For sure. it felt really expensive. Um, I have a little epilogue to this story as well, uh, but in CISO, tell us about tell us about your flight situation uh, before, so you're gonna, before you're we gonna... get into the epilogue. Okay, yeah, for sure. Uh, you cut, you touched on a couple of things. So yeah, people, if you have an issue with Delta, they have now a way to kick off uh, iMessage if you have iPhone. That is like very interesting, and in the, the way it displays and the way it encrypts. You would think that your messages are as encrypted with your fellow like friends and all that, but I don't think so because of based on no. the level of encryption that they're using for that kind of conversation is special yeah. because I guess Delta doesn't want to be sued for uh you know sharing information that they shouldn't be sharing. So it's it's really cool food, too. Like, food like for thought. I don't know I don't know if it's specifically Delta that does this or if all of the airlines are doing this now, but like you know, you will. You can call Delta, and they'll tell you, like, "Hey, the wait is approximately two hours right now. Why don't you try to text us?" And then, if you just Google like Delta customer service, the number pops up. It's still just like a regular one eight hundred number, but then you right. click it, and it gives you the option to just chat with them via iMessage. You just yeah, send yeah, them a text, yeah. and then 
they'll get back to you in like 15, 30 minutes or something. Right, right. So it's I don't really know. cool. They probably like, uh, you know, mess around with Apple's APIs. And so that's a good thing, the little Delta message hack right there. But um, yeah, so there were a couple of like news articles and, and news stations, like even here in Nashville. So it's not like, oh, news article, you got to open up an app, figure it out. Like I was sitting and watching the, uh, the news the other night, uh, some family, and uh, they uh, were talking about. I don't know how many flights it was, but and or number of passengers, but so many American Airlines cancellations, and this is like three weeks after yeah, I South, saw that. Southwest. Yeah. Um, um, and I know people. Well, I know myself. I know myself. My, I was on the American Airlines one, but I know people who were delayed with Southwest Airlines, and and it's crazy. Like they didn't have sample crews. They didn't have none of that. Right. Uh, well, standby it's just crews. A big standby issue crews. Right now, yeah, man. they didn't have standby crews. They didn't have none of that. Um, and uh, long, I guess, long story short is uh, the flight starts. It's it's late. It starts getting delayed. Boom, gets canceled. Where do I stay? Um, I'm in uh, I'm in the airport. I find a place. Um, going back to like life hacks, it's like if you have the right credit card, you can get this thing called Priority Pass, and then that gives you access to um, what do they call those? It's within the airport. It's like these, um, it's not hangouts. There's a better word for that. But yeah, there's like these areas. Lounge. Lounges. Thank you, Alex. They, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have access to these lounges. It only gives you one hour access, so I did pay for a full night. But anyway, that's like, we don't, we don't have to get into that. I had a place to rest. But it was yeah. just one of those things, man. I was in Austin before that. I'll talk a little bit about F1 after the break. Um, uh, but it was just like one of those things where like, man, these cancellations and I get it, dude. I mean, I wish I would have had my commercial pilot's license. So I would have been like, hey, fam, I got you, dude. I got you. Yeah. Let me fly this thing. Let's take you this to just Nashville. Me, bro. I could have I could have been a hero, bro. Me. I could have been a hero yeah. on all these occasions. But I, oh, I would have been like, yo, I got to go pick yo, up my but, friend okay, from Raleigh. For, for real, though, like what is the, the likelihood that that would have been a thing? Like well, how expensive zero, slash zero. like, you know. To like what? if you had your your commercial pilot's license, like if I was fucking just stuck in Toronto or in uh in wherever, yeah. like LaGuardia or something, how expensive slash just like like are, bad are we talking use about of your time, inefficient would it be for for you to just come scoop me real quick? Are we talking about their planes? Like flying their plane, like just saying, "Hey, let me take this." Well, yeah, like about... I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming, just like all things same as right now. So you do not own your own plane. All things same. Just the only difference is, uh, is you have your commercial pilot's license. Well, the, the issue there is like you're talking about like flying these Boeing's, and I, I that's like different level. You have to have so many hours. No, to do but that. what if, what if I just need you to just pick me and Barbara up, like in just like a small plane? Oh, okay. Damn. See, that distance is crazy, though, right? So it's not going to be as fast. It's going to be yeah. maybe twice as fast as a car, um, but not as fast as you'd think. Oh, wow. On... So that's going to be like like four hours or something to go from here to New York. Probably, yeah, because it, it'll uh, – Wow. Depending on the weather, too, and um, – uh, obviously, if you're commercial, you can fly in any kind of weather. Um, but you know, there's things to pay attention to: refueling. Um, there's weight and balance, right? If you guys have a bunch of stuff, the plane might not be able to take all the stuff, hmm. right? It might just be able to take you and, and some of your bags, because um, there's like calculations affecting the center of gravity, which affects whether or not you're going to stall out or not. And if you stall out, that what pretty much ends up happening is that there's no lift anymore, and uh, you've lost. Uh, the main Dang. Place, like the main force that's giving you the capability of flying um and it's pretty uh, confusing we, stuff man well no you know and like i still need a I, I haven't even taken the test right so like this is where i stopped in that journey i never touched on it you know i was talking about it so much i've flown solo yeah. like I, I think the last time i talked about it i'd flown solo at least three times so i was feeling good right. about it but it got to a point where it was like more and it wasn't necessarily like then i wanted to start traveling and spending money on other stuff but i need a i need to finish where i started and 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 on that note should we should we take a little bit of a break and uh yeah and, and come let's back do it. all right I, I probably won't be here back after the break guys that's okay Bye, just, Alex. Just the the that's okay yeah <laughs> 
Okay, we've returned. Uh, took a little bit of a break. Um, kind of lost, <laughs> lost track since we 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 uh, we talked about a few different things. I uh, was. I'm gonna wrap up a few thoughts that I had on 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 the pilot uh, situation. So the whole thing, it's like, yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, it takes more time. There's a lot of calculations that go into it. Um, I do need to finish it. And that, that is my plan, uh, Jerome and any, anyone who's listening. Um, but again, not for the pursuit of a career. Happiness. A, yeah. Yeah. And, oh. and, and it's more, yeah, exactly. It is pursuit of happiness and, uh, the challenge, man, it's still, it's still crazy. I, I sometimes I sit back, I think I try to desensitize myself to things that should cause yeah. a little bit more, uh, concern, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, and like sure. being up there and, and sometimes just like, I remember like actually being semi, well, in control of the machine and seeming like I'm in control of my, the, the air or whatever. Um, it's still a crazy thought. It's still insane that I yeah. was just like, on that mindset for a while. Um, but I'm right. glad I was able to prove it to myself. Um, well, good man. Like yeah. ha- when was the last time you flew <sighs> bro around August or something? Like it's been a minute. Like, Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Just cause I got okay. so busy with travel like yeah. every other week. And then, um, and that's fun too. Like I love traveling and not just for the sake of seeing stuff and taking in, you know, obviously, you know, if you spend your money somewhere, you're stimulating their economy. Um, mm-hmm. But then there's also uh, the added aspect, I think, especially in these times. And this is maybe where I'll transition into just talking about travel um, since it since it makes sense. Um, so one of the reasons why I like traveling a lot is actually to get, you know, firsthand take on what people have going on in their in their areas and their locations and seeing what's up. And what I mean by that is like, not just the cool things, but like mentally where they're at, what they think about, like where I'm from, what they think about, like, uh, where they're from, because that adds to the conversation, bro. I think a lot of people, um, Mm -hmm. don't necessarily when they're traveling, get the opportunity to think about that because obviously there's touristy things to do. But if you have the chance to get a little bit more of a local perspective, the question then becomes like, uh, what can I learn from here? What, how, what can I, whatever version of myself that I'm trying to become, how does this place add to that? Um, and it's very simple, right? It's not, it doesn't have to get super meta, but like, um, you know, when it's international opinions, people have about like Americans and I'm not just talking about like us citizens or anything like that, but I'm just talking about like people from this side of the hemisphere are perceived in a certain way from like, uh, you know, people from the Eastern hemisphere. Right. And like, so on and so forth, yeah, you can always for sure. break it down. Um, and then, you know, like it's, it's just those kind of things, right. Where like, I think people are always quick to point at like things culturally going wrong in your part of the world. But like, this is a fun part where if you're acquainted and get to know places, man, you can kind of, it depends on the conversation, but you could always like say, Hey, what's going on? What's going on in your part of the world? What's going on? Cause like humans aren't yeah. perfect. You know, if it becomes like a. Um, a kind of conversation that is like helpful to learn. I think that is like, well, and what I mean by helpful to learn what, when it becomes that kind of conversation that you're both seeking to actually understand each other, it's healthy to admit that, man, yeah, shit's not going right over here. Things can be improved or this is what we've got going on. That's, that's right. True. But when people are just like, damn, yeah, your but country it's, it's, is it's just hard fucked to, up, you know, it's Go hard ahead. to get to that level though. You know, like. Even even within the U.S., I feel like it's hard to – like there's so many people in the world. For sure. I would argue there are more, more people in the world th- than there aren't that just don't want to learn about someone else's yeah. like, upbringing or – you know what I mean? Like people are just so voluntarily closed off. Um. And Which, so just like into their own thing. Right. I, I feel like people just don't want to know. Yeah. Which I think here's a question for you, which I think is fair and it's fine because if they truly are into themselves, they're not making accusations about stuff going on in other parts of the world. It's like, for example, and you could think about whatever it is like you could say, like, why, 
why why do they sell frozen yogurt in this part of the country when we all know that you know g- gelatos and I don't know if gelatos under better. frozen yogurt or yeah or gelatos better or you know classic ice cream is better right but like you know you can take mm-hmm. that all across the social political economic spectrum of topics. The thing is, like, yep. honestly, if it doesn't affect your day-to-day, well, okay. why are you worried about it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, why, like, you know, like, oh, it's because, of, you know, sometimes it's and, like, oh, it's our country and all this stuff. And I just think... Well, so kind of kind of using that gelato example and just taking it a little further, you know how, especially with food, there are a lot of people who are like, you know, say like, I don't know, like tuna, for instance. You'll be like, oh... Have you ever had uh, like raw tuna in sushi? Yeah. And someone will be like, "No, I, I don't like tuna." And yeah. you be like, "Why don't you like tuna? Like, did something happen bad with tuna?" And they'll be like, "Oh, well, I've actually never had it. I just don't think I would like it." Oh that's, yeah. That's kind of people's mindset about just general ideology in the world as well. It's For like sure. they don't For they sure. don't know what it is. They've never tried it. They just don't want to know. They right. just think that they won't like it. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's all what matters is is the actual words, right? Because like uh and what I'm trying to say is like every all of this is just sounds, but we've we've come to agreements about like what those sounds mean. And so if you just say I don't like it, that means that usually if you don't like something you've had experience with it to make such a exactly clear statement. Exactly. The difference is, but for some like, reason in the 21st century, it's not like yeah. that anymore. Well, why can't you the, exactly? So the question is not even to you, but like to the, the 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 problem is like why don't people say I don't know, um, and just admit I'm not interested in trying out, but and and that's right. okay. That's like that's how you use language. You know, that's how you're like, mm-hmm. um, don't start making opinions or accusations about stuff that you aren't acquainted with and this is like i mean we all do it i'm not trying to say it's like we're not but i think there's a little bit of a difference that after you learn how little yeah. you know you get to the point where I agree. we get to the point where what you're talking about you won't say that anymore i don't like it you'll just say no i've never tried it um then if somebody right. asks oh would you like to i was like um like it, you know so many factors do i have to like fly across the world yeah. for it or can i like order and, it on uber know, eats or you know, whatever like, um, you know like so this is this is a really good example so like barbara's aunt um she called me the other day and we were just like chit-chatting or whatever and for for whatever reason we got on to like the topic of of covid and like covid vaccine specifically classic classic, and, um, classic table yeah. topic <laughs> and yeah right and um like this you know not to like I don't mean for this to, to get yeah. political. I just, no, yeah, I just feel like it. this is a very good example no, let's of, talk uh, about of what she sure. was saying. Was she was she was talking about you know so she's fully vaccinated. Most of her family's fully vaccinated. Actually, I think all of her family's fully na- vaccinated. They live in New York and all that. For sure, um, classic. And she was she was talking to me about um, you know she doesn't understand why we have like a lot of people that that don't want to get the vaccine. Um, but then she brought up a very good point. She was like. You know, maybe there are some people who have a valid reason that they have thought through in their own head for why they don't want to get the vaccine. And she was like, if you have thought it through and you can give me an actual reason, great. Like, I am okay with that. I like I hear you. I can tell that you've thought it through. And the example she gave was like, um, you know, say, for example, that. Someone's trying to get pregnant and they don't know how the uh, the vaccine is going to affect their ovaries or whatever. Like it, it may make it more difficult to get I mean, pregnant. I you don't know. We don't know yeah. because it's just – yeah. I mean it's and, like and so anything she was that like, you're if... – go ahead. Go right. Ahead. And so she was just like if someone were to give me that as a reason for why they are choosing not to get the vaccine, like, okay, great. Sounds like you've thought it through. Like, you know. Maybe give them the advice of like, you know, talk about it with a doctor or whatever and see what's best for you. But at least you have thought it through and you have a an actual reason for why you are choosing to not do this. And then, you know, she took it one step further and was like, if your reason is just because because I can, because I I don't want the government to tell me what to do. That seems like a pretty poor reason Uh, considering just. 
this how, what has happened with the like with the pandemic like how many people have died and all that i i agree um, you know you know what's funny uh i was visiting one of our friends uh uh and uh, you know and rafael he actually has wanted to come and talk yeah. about this very very specific topic so um but he he has an interesting perspective uh um about the whole situation but i'm not going to get into that cuz that's that's his words what i will say about like yeah, what yeah. you just said I feel like we don't owe each other explanations. So that's and what for anything like why, why do you like I mean you can explain why you I don't know choose to follow Christ like to drink wine um like to play the banjo uh but you don't owe anybody that reason. That's the part about being a free person. No. And the whole I, I don't think you do, but I I do think like you know in in this situation like it, a lot of people have have like essentially paid the ultimate price, you know? Um, and what, so it, yeah. So like to they, me, I, I see what you're saying, like but with the... their life. So it, it feels a little to me like you but should, the, but the vaccination, know, what does it so... help though? Like, no, this is a good, this is a good question. Cause we're just talking science here from my understanding, unless I'm like mistaken, mm -hmm. like this is to protect yourself, not to stop the spread of the virus. Correct. It, cannot stop you you can still carry it and it could be so, passed on to somebody else correct or no um i believe you are correct yeah but i guess my argument like you know well, the, the, I i'm not making a point yeah that, i'm not trying to make a point with that no other no than like yeah uh, if that's the case then when you get vaccinated you're protecting yourself period and then because of that you know, you're part of an economic system, like you have a job. And if you can't show up to your job, how many people rely on it? You know, like if you're, uh, whether you're a farmer, a businessman, whatever, like if your job impacts, like not even just essential things, but anything, mm -hmm. it, if you don't exist, it's going to have an impact on the economy. I think that's what people, that's what we're not talking about. Like at the end of the day, why we we want a strong economy i think any politician will say that anybody like you do not want to have a weak people right like that's why um yeah like they we have good foods and they put stuff in food like you know you could disagree with everything but at the end of the day that's why we take supplements that's why we try to sleep you know like um of course you know you could talk about like why uh, pharmaceuticals have like a certain point of just trying to get people on drugs you know like you know, not everyone yep. in those companies does that, yep. but uh, there's always counter arguments. But what I'm trying to say is like, I think the, the, the conversation, um, has missed the mark on like what we're actually trying to do here. Like nobody would like for 50% of our population of our country to just go away because real world alert here, like that would be super dangerous in terms of like our safety with the rest of the world. Like, you know, if we just lost right. like 90 per like I'll go even crazier. Let's say obviously it's the snap, dude. It's like that's famous. what I'm saying. Like, but like, but what if the other countries don't lose those? We, I mean, we're not going to deny mm -hmm. we're friends at certain points. But like, hey, slip up, catch you sleeping, uh, you know, like that's just the nature of the world. Yeah. And so I think if we reframed our mindset into like, what can we sign? like prove with facts that will help us achieve the outcomes that we want. And like, that's the objective. Like, so, you know, so many people are talking no, about like tracking right, and stuff, I, you know, like tracking and, and it's, it's just weird conversations. Like our phones track us, like people ingest all kinds of stuff they don't know about, like in their body, you know, so, what I'm talking about people don't work out as yeah. much. Like, you know, all these so, things you know, like to take it, to take yeah. it one step, like yeah. it's over fun. all yeah, of this, yeah. like to take it, to take it one step higher it and kind of like the overarching problem i feel like is we don't know like we as a society as a population as an individual we don't know who to trust and who to not trust anymore you know because great, great they're point. so because um you know going back to the vaccine example right you've got people like the cdc who are supposed to be the brightest the smartest you know the yeah. best of the best in the in the medical field telling us one thing i would hope that i could blindly just follow what they say and yeah. i would be doing like what is the greater good but i don't True. think 
it, it, like I think it's hard to make that distinction now because here's another great example. Um, I took a class last semester on uh, global health care, and the professor um, at the beginning of the class told us like he's not going to make a you know any sort of stand on like either side of the political aisle. And I was like, okay, like, and it was super interesting class. But one thing that always bothered me that he said was that drug pricing in America is not unfair, that everyone has access to equal products. And actually drug prices are cheap in America. And I was just like blown away by that. Mm -hmm. And so I asked him one day, I was like, hey, you know, what about the example of insulin? Like that's, that's an example that people use all the time of like insulin is way too expensive and I can't afford it. So then people die because there was like a really famous news article of this like 17 or 19 year old who couldn't afford insulin. He was in college. He was like on his own for the first time in his life, couldn't afford his insulin. And then he died because he just stopped taking it. And, it, and I remember I specifically told him the story of um, a guy that I met at Eastman who is diabetic Eastman had just changed its like healthcare coverage or whatever, and he went from having his insulin fully covered by the insurance to all of a sudden they charged him twelve hundred dollars for one month's worth of insulin. That's like rent, um, especially in Kingsport, Tennessee. That's like probably more than what that guy paid for his mortgage. You know? Sure, sure. So what did um, your professor say? Yeah. So what? And so what do you get at? So yeah. So I brought this up to him, and my professor literally all he said was a solid three sentences he was like oh that's not true it's all just propaganda it's all just the media trying to convince you that insulin's expensive insulin's actually not expensive the trump administration signed into law that um no one can be charged more than 25 dollars per month for right. insulin right i think but yeah i think i, I saw like, that i did see that legislation but so okay but okay so then now i've got this dichotomy so when did trump become president 2016 right yeah, I mean, we could, analyze, yeah, of, we could analyze. We could analyze that down to the, to this the core guy, of the situation. Yeah. So, so here was my problem: was here's this guy that I literally physically had a conversation with face to face, and he told me he was being charged twelve hundred dollars for insulin right, that's in like twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen, actually probably twenty nineteen or twenty twenty. Right. Right. Um, this is a real life experience versus. I've got on the opposite end of the spectrum, my professor who teaches – like UNC is not like a bad school. UNC is a top 20 university. Their undergrad business program is like in the top five. Um, it is a very prestigious university. Here's a professor that's teaching at this very prestigious university that's got 30 years experience in the healthcare field who's telling me the exact – opposite is true of what i personally lived in my life you know right and so i'm like i'm in this weird dichotomy of like what do i believe because i have a life experience that's telling me one thing and then i have all of societal social norms of higher education telling me the exact opposite like if i can't believe my professor at this top 25 university who's got 30 plus years of industry experience. What can I believe? Dude, Who we, can I believe? We, we are in it now because like, uh, this is like, think about like somebody who's, uh, been faith based the entire life. And then you got professors yeah. talking about there is no God and all that stuff where, and, and I'm not even going to get into the religion. Uh, so like, I'm just showing you a distinct example of something where like people, it's all, there's a lot of, as much as people don't want to admit it. We all have faith in things. What right. what those things are could be anything. And so exactly. my, 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 my question to you and the question that – well, not even know. The question we ask ourselves is what can we prove to ourselves? This is why um, people love science in a way because unlike other aspects of humanity, like what we've recognized from existing, it's something that you can prove to yourself. What does that mean? Like gravity, right? Like there's no question that you could do that. And then if you want to then formulate an equation, mathematics can explain those things to us. That's why when people are talking about things like the vaccine, it 
can be explained with facts, with numbers, with math, well, with statistics. So, but so then but the, the my my problem though is like when I'm talking about like this global healthcare class, right? Sure. In my mind, like there should it, it is science. There should be an objective answer, but in what? Yeah, but yeah it's, like. Well, the, the, you see, the question you're contradictory asking. contradictory information. Well, the question is too broad. Is like, is it expensive? But like, for whom? For what? Under what circumstances? Like, you don't know if the mm -hmm. insurance coverage was just uh, wanting to charge more. Like, you know, the, you don't know like this whole supply chain, right? There's like questions of like, just yeah. because it's cheap to make doesn't mean they're not going to mark up the price for margin. Doesn't mean like you know to manufacture insulin. Maybe he's thinking about it from that. Like uh, manufacturing drugs is probably not that expensive, but like try to get mm -hmm. you know see the difference in between selling cocaine in South America versus in Europe or in North America, right? And I'm not you know like speaking yeah. by experience or anything. I'm just saying like that's the way economics like works. It's like where can you do the markup? And until you truly understand the supply chain for this specific instance, you can't really get down to where did the price change because like land costs to maintain and all that stuff. Like, so if you factor in all those numbers, maybe that's what he means. It's not unreasonable, not because yeah. like, is it morally reasonable? That's a different question, right? That's like uh, for this specific scenario with the whole like COVID question. And, and uh, you you were mentioning like like what can you prove? I think that's that's the issue. Is like with a vaccine, nobody has a lab at home to really test things out and do all of right. that, right? Like they can't prove gravity. Right. So they can't like prove gravity a, to themselves. A, uh, they can't. You know what I'm yeah. saying? They no, can't. you can't. You so can't. That's the like issue. Any, you that's know, the even issue. even you and I as engineers, you know, yeah. if we were to try to derive the mathematics behind gravity, we couldn't do it. Not, yeah, you know what I mean, I'm saying? we, we so, use formulas and we kind of accepted, uh, yeah, like, exactly, you know, exactly. we, we had to, you're taught, yeah. you're taught a fundamental principle in school right. and then formulas that are derived from that. And then right. but, at a but, certain extent, you just have to believe right. and so that's, that it is, it, that it's fact. Right. And if it, it's repeatable and all those kind of things, I mean, fundamentally, right, like you can prove grab, like, you know, you can. If you can find a ruler, you can start making measurements. If you can find a balance, you can start, you know, grabbing weights. You can do things to get to that point, but it, you know, it takes a lot to then finally say. And there's so many things. Totally agree. I, I think that's where I mentioned where it's faith and like to what extent. Uh, and what are your goals, man? Like um, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, if you're healthy, if you're fit within respect to vaccines, is it really going to make much of a difference? Pro I mean, like. I, no, I, you I, know, I, like, really, you know, it I don't probably, so. it probably won't. If you know? you're healthy and fit. That's what I'm saying. So like if you're immunocompromised, I mean, I, I don't think those people have any questions about like, yeah, they will right. do what they can. Like, I mean, so but, like, you know, if that you're being healthy, said, like, though, I think I'm, I'm just I saying like, like 60 something percent of Americans are, are not, I, like are uh, not fit. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah. True. Well, but, you know, like, like that, that's the whole thing. The that's like fattest. The, yeah, it's 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 definitely up there. If not, yeah, and I think, well, this is like where, uh, you know, this gets into the question of life. Would you want to live in a world where things are programmed for you, like you know, or would you like to see the the beauty of self um, uh, proclamate, like you know, self uh, like motivation and then self destruction? Because that's the world we live in. Like that is the true freedom of it. When you try to micromanage so, people, that is the issue. And I'm not even talking about vaccine. I'm just talking about like education, bro. You can pick anything. Yeah, fitness. Yeah. It's a. Um, so I think it's tough. I think it's more it's of an issue of of self awareness, and mm -hmm. and I think it. This is a very subjective viewpoint. Like I'm not saying that what I'm about to say is like the end all be all. You have to think this way. This is yeah. just my personal opinion. I think for me and the way that I live my life, I think at a certain point I admit that there are people around me, people you know, above me who know more about a certain field or a certain topic than sure, I do. I think sure. that's true of everyone. I mean, sure, yeah. there there are probably there are probably people out here that disagree with that statement that think that they're the smartest person and no one's going to tell them otherwise ever. Yeah, but I'll, I think for most I'll see people, that person six feet under at some point. So. 
you yeah. know, unless so, they're in the mood. You know, for, for, most, for most people, you, it's true that there are going to be people that know more about a certain topic than, than yourself. Right. Yeah, like, sure. And that's and, a very specific co- so topic think, under a specific scenario. Yes. It's like mm. uh, everyone's got their niche, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I think the way that I live my life is I kind of admit to myself, okay, you don't know about this. You're not going to – or not that you're not going to. Maybe you don't want to put in right. the extra effort to – Learn every little detail about right. COVID to know – to make an educated decision for yourself one way or another. So for me, I'm like, okay, I'm going to put my faith in the scientist who mm. I expect to have the answers because that's what they study. That's what their job is. Like they are supposed to know – what is what right? right and that's not the freedom that, that, that that's i was the, telling you about that you yeah. should have that is exactly and not as saying long that as that's we're in like agreement, the correct way yeah as long as we're in agreement like, with that that's exactly that's the beautiful thing about being a human being but once you take away i think the self-realization this awareness that you had now we could say that some people aren't capable of doing that you could say and yes, some people aren't that's the problem and, then, and some people aren't if like you know like maybe like you know like somebody with down syndrome could they like you know just to be very like a clear example but if you're you know in your five senses uh, per se and if you simply just do not want to like that is your prerogative man and once you don't um now now that's not me saying that like the uh, a republic because not you know democracy is just rule of the mob so like a republic could choose you know the uh, the the mandate that's necessary then you know that's that's the point of living in society and if you don't like living in society well there are repercussions that's why there have been revolutions in the past and that's why there will be continue to be revolutions because it's a it's a dance man it's a dance of perspectives yeah. for sure it, it has to be that I way just, because we could we can definitely get lost in one direction believing everything and then distrusting everything so it is a constant mess for sure it, that, that's, the only, way, that's the only way there are that's the only way i think there are too many people who put the trust of something like covid in themselves or in like you know political figures who also don't know like like scientifically don't know what is going on uh, as opposed to actually listening to the scientists who are working on it day in and day out yeah i don't yeah. know if that makes sense it does make sense it's, I, uh, I think but i guess going back to my earlier point it's like it's hard to figure out you don't know you those should individuals and should not put your trust right. in. That, and plus, yeah. and then the people that you know, you're you're talking about a big group of people that don't know these things, but you don't know these people on a regular basis. You might know one or two, but you don't know every single one across that je- that wide spectrum, and so you don't know their reasons. You don't know their scenario. You know, and and yeah. what I mean by that is like, uh, that's why self governance is important, man. Like I think that's I think the whole point of I think this entire section is self-governance because um once you lose that yeah we are um um we are not uh, a a critical component of being human like we are literally just the animal component of ourselves instead of what's more um that's yeah but these are good points i don't think anything that we've said here is like it's it's just it's it's very real it's very real because it's the yeah, questions you need to ask yourself is. and to kind of wrap it up. It is like, I want to talk about a little bit more about like formula one and, and, and how that works. Um, to, to kind of wrap it up. I think the question that you have to ask yourself, like I, and I'll just give my example. So not even like trying to make a point here. I had certain goals needed to do certain travel, um, before there were vaccines and COVID was, you know, I did a road trip. Like that's a fact. Like it, you know, it's it's all over the like in, Instagram. Like it's there. So like I can't I can't say oh my god. I, you know, I had figured out I'd been exposed to COVID before that road trip, like way before, and and mm-hmm. then like I was like thinking about like well what does this mean? No effect on me. 
what what am I doing with my life? And you know, later on, whenever I figured that out, I was just like, I'm gonna go travel, you know, and uh, and yeah. travel in a way where, yeah, I'm not gonna be really exposed to a lot of people. I'll be out in the wilderness, you know, here and there, and within a car, you know, I'm not on airplanes or anything. Obviously, I didn't do airplane travel like I am doing now, but that's not because of a fear of it. It's just like the convenience of being in a car, which is. You could talk about a road trip uh, episode at some point um, with with Serge or whatever. But my point is, eventually when the, the choice can, comes out for vaccines and I need to get to certain places, you know, when in Rome. And like you could say, hey, you know, like that's crazy that you have to do it when you go to this city versus not going to this city. I'm like, bro, I'm I'm a visitor there. You know what I'm saying? This is the this is the issue with people who don't know how to assimilate into cultures. And I know people think that's crazy, but that's just the way it is. If somebody goes into Jerome's house, they're going to play by Jerome's rules. If not, you know, that's why there's yep. a door, there's a lock, walls, etc. And I think that's what people are forgetting. It's the same thing if like, you go to a place that isn't, you know, doesn't have the same policies as a city like uh, Toronto or a state like uh, uh, a country like uh, Canada. Well, you can, you know, like that place has the right to make its own rules. And if you don't want to, you know, play by their rules, you don't have to go there. You know what I'm saying? And if you want to conquer them and yeah. tell them what to do, then good luck, you know, good luck. Yeah. Cause that's uh that's a different game. So that's, that's, those are my thoughts on, on that. that that's some heavy ass shit, bro. Hey man, I don't, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I don't know how we got here. I, I think, really don't because think, literally our plan after the break was to talk about Formula One yeah. and talk about the rest of the travel stuff. I don't know how we ended up here. But I think it, it had I to be said a conversation. because we've been traveling a lot. Like you and I. We have. We, we have been taking a lot yeah, of flights. We have. So, uh, you know, I think a lot of people like, dude, we're not drones, bro. Like we, uh, we've we shown that we're very independent thinkers and we have our reasons. And so we do what we got to do. And of course, you know what I'm saying? I, I want to I point out, like we, we have been, in fact, following the rules, like where, where the I rules mean, are in place. Like we have yeah, been following Yeah, yeah, I mean, them. whatever. That's like semantics. Um, That's like easy to stuff to do, right? You know, it's like... <laughs> It's, while the rules yeah. are ridiculous or whatever, you know that's that's a whole different point. But yeah, dude, it's it's not well, that the, crazy. You know the you the know? only the only reason I bring it up is because I feel like there's you know there's a whole separate group of people who get really upset when you know there are a lot of corporations nowadays that are that are mandating the vaccine and stuff like oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Um, that's, I, a, that's a that's a tough conversation. There's a group of people who. Yeah, it is. And there's there's a group I don't want to spend too much time on this, but there's a group of people who are very against that and you know, they're wanting to to quit their jobs over that and stuff like that, but Which is their right. I mean, you know. At, at, yeah, it, it's like it's their choice, right? Like at the end of the day, like these are private corporations, they can make their own rules. Sure. Um just just the same as they can tell you, "Hey, you can't show up to to work drunk." Or, "Hey, you you yeah. can't park on our campus without paying us five hundred dollars yeah. a year to park and that's they that's, can make up their own rules and that's the beauty of like capitalism you know? because and, you can compete yeah. and you can and start it's your up your choice. own company you can start up your own company right it's and if it's the government your, gets involved you can try to start your own country <laughs> and so. that's that's where it gets complicated that's where it gets complicated is when the government involves but just solely if it's a private company you have the freedom of choice to either conform to their new rules yeah or quit and and find yeah, a and different and, company or or start your own company yeah. that makes its own rules. Right. And life is full of risk. And on that note, I want to transition over to F1 because it's not like some crazy thing, but like uh, yeah. a crazy transition to say. But in terms of the risk, dude, I uh, it's it's gotten so much darker. I have like now shades on my uh, on my face. I got to work on I the know, lighting situation here. Um, uh, <laughs> so in you know F1, fastest cars in the world. It's a beautiful combination of like engineering uh individual talent team collaboration bro it's such a sick thing i i know you've been in toronto wait, wait, wait. just just for for a pause for a second did you watch that movie ford versus ferrari yeah for sure bro i'm a i'm and a is it, i'm, I'm not is like, it anything like that i mean it's, was that f1 uh fuck, now you're getting i do not recall i don't, I don't know. know i okay. don't think so uh, I do not think so, um, but may okay. Ignore it. Ignore yeah, it. Strike that know. comment from yeah. the record. No, no. Yeah, it, it, I didn't. It's been a while since I've seen that the film, and I'm not like I didn't memorize that. But um, yeah, fastest cars, and, and it is and okay. When, when yeah, when you're saying fastest cars, like how fast are we talking? 
200? Damn, another motherfucking question, bro. I, I didn't come prepared <laughs> with the statistics. I, you I'm know, sorry. So, the, the, the story behind why I like F1, there was a Colombian driver, Juan Pablo Montoya. He um, was in F1 early 2000s or so. And uh, he ended up actually moving over to NASCAR and IndyCar uh, here in, in America. Uh, but uh, what ended up happening, dude, was uh, we become – Obviously, fans like Colombians will always support yeah, of uh, somebody who becomes like a big international sensation. Like we have a lot of uh, uh, bike bikers, um, uh, like uh, bicyclists, bicyclists um, in like who've won the the French bicicleta. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, they uh, <laughs> they've won they've won all kinds of the Italian uh, tour and the French one. Uh, very recently, uh, sh- short story. Every weekend we're watching F1. After he left, it kind of died down because, like, I mean, they're they're great drivers, but like, you know. Then uh, recently, Netflix had that series, Drive to Survive, which made it insane, oh, I haven't seen it. dude. You got to watch it because it's like has nothing to do with fast cars and all this stuff that like people always get turned off about. No, dude, this is personalities, bro. This is competitors uh there's money involved dude there's teens involved there's so much drama it's excellent entertainment dude um uh anyway it's created uh, a like so much fascination from so many people um it was evident in the american grand prix dude it wasn't even there in 2020 in the same way the u.s open wait okay, okay. wasn't can into I, can his, i uh yeah, yeah go ahead go ahead can i can i interject for a second so i i, I looked it up the uh the fastest car that stands as the official F1 top speed turn record on light. is uh, – is, I can't see what car it is. Um, I, I think it's a Honda actually. Yeah, is it um, – the, the engine's a Honda it, maybe? The Honda – maybe, maybe. It, it looks like it's called the Honda RA106. Um, the official F1 top speed record, 247 miles per hour. But that's on the track. And then it says, right? On the track. On the track. The, yeah, then it which says, is crazy. Though during testing, the driver measured 256 miles, so 10 miles per fa- 10 miles per hour faster on one run, but he couldn't replicate it on the return run, so it didn't count as the official F1 top speed record. Got it, got it, got it. Dope, dude. That's and, insane. 247 and, miles an hour? Any mechanical engineer who likes what they do will marvel at like the design of those cars is to keep them on the ground dude they have so much freaking power so much power that like the design is to do and you know they've focused more on being renewable and like you know whatever like the the world is there for people to use it you know if you don't want a world with people i don't know yeah i can't i can't fix your problem you know um you can watch that show Mm -hmm. utopia which i've plugged in before and you know you can see if you yep. want to go about it like that i don't know if you've seen utopia on amazon prime but um my comment would make absolute sense um basically yeah. uh do you want me to spoiler spoiler or not nah? are you yeah go it? ahead uh, yeah, they, I'm, they, I'm not gonna watch it i'm okay. not gonna watch it i don't know what's going <laughs> they stare they sterilize uh the world they plan to sterilize the world what does that mean uh, what does that mean? Sterilize, like no more no more you babies cannot reproduce for yeah and they c- try to control it based on um just like specific Damn. individuals yeah so they just sterilize uh uh yeah and there you go and so That's if you don't wild. have if you have don't want to see f1 have you seen going that around c store movie or show on apple tv plus no 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 with jason momoa okay i, I haven't seen it either I, I gotta check it out it, it seems kind of similar like interesting they, they they can't they can't reproduce babies that are not blind like so, the entire population is blind. Jesus. Um, and then that's yeah, crazy, yeah, bro. It's, it's crazy. So it's crazy. Go, going back to F one, Austin, dude, it's crazy. I looked up the stats. It was close to four hundred thousand people there over the span of the weekend, dude. Wow. It's packed, bro. It's packed. You would never, you wouldn't think like. Wait. Okay. So I I do have a question about this. So. Were you specifically in Austin just for the F1 race yes. or like were you also just chilling in Austin? Well, yeah, chilling for, chilling in Austin a few days before, a few days after. Uh, but the goal was – But uh, you went for the event. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I went for the event. Dude, um, that, that's that's my, uh, my next like goal city that I want to go to. Dude, you know, uh, so much For a long fun. time, it was San Francisco. I, I did that in back in 2017. Uh, then it was Denver. We did that just earlier this year like – 
next on my list is Austin, Texas. I have wanted to go to Austin for so long. Um, Hell yeah, yeah dude. So tell me more about the city. Yeah, yeah so um, – well, let's talk about just like the city of Austin and how it kind of connects with the with uh with the track, right? So the track's not that close to the city. It's not far, uh, but it's it's definitely a drive, and it's um in between, I guess, the path of the airport and the city and all that, um, like east of the airport. Anyway, the uh the track is specifically built just for that. Uh, some races for Formula One actually happen within city downtowns, like areas like Monaco, yeah, and and whatnot. Um, but then the city of Austin itself is like, you know, kind of like around this one river mainly. And it's got a Northern and Southern side around that river. I forget the name. Um, dude, it's got beautiful views. You might've seen some of my Instagram pictures. It doesn't capture everything. Like yeah. got great barbecue there, bro. Live music. They've got a Broadway, well, okay, so they've got a Broadway like street, not as many levels oh, in terms okay. of the bars, but it's like equally as much as a, of a fun time, but shit show at the same time. And then they have like, you know, just like people getting crazy, like the crazy stuff you see in Nashville's Broadway, Nashville yeah. Broadway. It just yeah. like, not like, and no hate. It's just like, that's the environment, bro. If you, if you're about it, then it's good. Yeah. And if not, then, you know, then, then don't go. So is, and then they have other like for, very trendy upscale bars and stuff. So very nice too. So for, for like the F1 race, right? When, when you say F1 track, is it just like a a cylind not cylindrical like an oval like circle track like they do for NASCAR or is no, it like no, no, like no. you know different terrains like all over the place kind of thing? So this was fascinating. This is the first Formula One track I've ever been to. I will remedy that as my yeah. life hopefully continues to go on. But if uh, if it doesn't, I'll, I have this one experience, and so it actually isn't flat. Um, there's elevation okay. changes. There's curves, yeah, so you yeah. can turn in multiple directions, and uh, about three or four miles to distance. I think it's about three. I think a uh, full lap. Um, I could okay. be wrong, and if I'm wrong, you know, whatever. You uh, y'all can Google it and, and, and say <laughs> something about it, whatever. Uh, but three that's, or four miles. Yeah. Wow. Which like, so it's it's, it's not like inside of a stadium or anything. No way, bro. No way. Like it's all you just, open you air. You just post up on the side of it, and then. You're just watching. Yeah, they have grandstands. They have like general admission viewing areas. They have paddocks that like are oh, directly wow. close to like where the cars pit. And um, yeah, dude. It's, but there's it's, like no, there's no place that you could sit and see the entire track. Austin has this one like very tall thing that you could, but that's not like I I, I don't even know how you get access to that. It's I'm sure it's not that bad. Um, and I, it's probably expensive. Never mind. But um, yeah, there's yeah. not really one. There might be an angle where you might be able to see a majority of the track, but like to follow the cars, nah. There's no, um, and that's not really how it's done. Well, you kind of pick a location. They have TVs for you to watch where they're at and other parts, and you can kind of see them. Yeah. Um, okay. And yeah, it's sick, dude. That's it crazy, dude. Yeah, dude. It's it's really awesome. That's crazy. In terms of like uh, the city of Austin. Uh, how, how how do I uh, so if it, very different from Dallas, different from Houston, um, it is the capital. So they have their capital building there, which is pretty majestic. Um, if you've been to D.C., I mean, it's it's different, right? Because we're talking yep. about the capital of fifty states. But you know, Texas right. is a very right. aw like awesomely unique place. Uh, it's history, like, dude. The capital has information about, like, uh, uh, you know, like the the Tejanos, which are the the Texans that have lived over there even before Mexico tried to take over, or the French, or the yeah. you know, or or, or the Americans, um, like uh, that area. The, the true nature of Texas is actually it always has wanted to be its own thing, bro. It's never, you know, it didn't right. want to be a part of Mexico. Mm, it's gotten like yeah know, had, for sure it's always been its own thing and it's it's a beautiful actual diversity people think it's like you know like why people avoid, no 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 dude it's been these mix of peoples that have just wanted to and i think that just adds complexity to the conversation of like what does it mean for it to be that lone star state um and i'm not going to get into it because like that's right. like a whole history lesson that i have no idea about but the building's sick their downtown area i was there during the film festival very cool Hell films, yeah. independent films. Austin has a film festival. If anybody's like a, um, 
a fan of that kind of thing. Um, I recommend it. I enjoyed it. I like watching uh, normal blockbuster kind of stuff and then, um, you know, more independent kind of films as well uh, when I get the chance. Um, and like I mentioned, the food, dude, I, you know, you're a foodie. You'd have a grand time there, bro. You would have a grand time. I'm a time. huge foodie, man. You know, hop on a Southwest um, flight if yeah. you can, I guess. That's probably because, you know, Southwest based out of Texas. So, um you did probably is the That's best true. airline um and it's dope i don't know what what kind of questions do you have about austin or anything like that i you know everyone always says that austin is like a huge like tech town um did you get that vibe from being in there like it, does it feel like a san francisco or la or like what's uh, you know what's the general feel of the yeah. city, or is it its own thing? It's its own thing for now. It hasn't become what I would characterize. But like, even if you've been to San Francisco, there are certain pockets where it's yeah. very techy. Um, but you know, if you go all like, it, you have to go all the way out to like Palo Alto or like Mountain View to go to the campuses right. of those buildings. And then tech in New York, it's totally different, bro. Because you know, it's it's in the it, Google's got a massive space, but it's not like uh, right. Yeah. So there, I don't know that the answer is a short answer. Like they've got hella scooters. Uh, I don't know if that indicates a techie culture. Uh, probably not, but like it, um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I think it just shows like they've, they've got like a lot of like companies there The the, the architecture of the city is very interesting. Lots of different glass business and, uh, residential buildings. I, I yeah. don't think tech has, to my knowledge, taken over a part of the area where it's called that. I don't think that's the case. What What's going on is companies will post up in different areas, and uh, Austin is still um, incorporating it the way it is. I didn't do a tech tour, though, so if you do get a chance, um, I think that's a big question. I want to, man. You, know, you like got I people said, like Elon Musk it's, saying, it's thing saying do. don't turn Texas, don't turn Austin into the next San Francisco. You got people like Elon yeah. Musk saying that stuff. So. Yeah. Um, which yeah. it shouldn't be. You know, not uh, San Francisco is cool, but like Austin should be its own thing because like um, yeah, it's, it's, sure. it's really its own thing. It's nothing like Dallas. So um, each place, uh, you know, full circle. Um, we can't hop into last call. I think this is going to be – uh, unless you have another topic, but well, I, the only thing I've got is my the epilogue to my Toronto. Oh yeah, trip, no man. for sure. So anyway, I won't I'll, I won't say I'll save. Uh, now I'll have a different last call. What I was gonna say is like each location should kind of do its own thing, and if you're about it, go visit. And if not, don't visit. <laughs> you know, and uh, that's that's <laughs> my le- that's my lesson there it. for people. And I think that sounds crazy to some, but. Um, uh, if you like people going into not your, every place it, has to be the same. If if you like people going into your home and telling you what to do, let me know. You know, let me know, and then I will yeah. say, yeah, we should probably. But like, nobody's gonna say that. Nobody's gonna say that. Yeah. So, yeah, I know what you mean. I've, I've ended all world conflicts just with that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Tell me about your epilogue, bro. I'm very curious. Okay, so we we had a great time in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Um, we're leaving on the following Saturday morning. It was supposed to be a week long trip. Got, uh, got kind of condensed to about five days or so. But so we're leaving Saturday morning again, 6 a.m. flight. Uh, my dad gets up at 4 a.m., drops us off at the airport. Okay. And so 4 a.m., we're in the Toronto airport. Same uh-huh. thing. We're supposed to fly to Detroit and then to DC. We had like a, a, a stand up comedy show. Um, I, I mentioned it to Alex last week, so yeah, if you heard that episode it. last week, I love that you'll section, know. Bro. We, uh, yeah, dude, we we went and saw the Hassan Minaj stand-up show. Fantastic. Uh, would would recommend. But so we were in D.C. So we're trying to get to D.C. from Toronto. Um, so we get to the airport about 4 a.m. again, and this time no issues checking in. Checked in perfectly fine. Um, then they tell us. Okay, uh, security doesn't open until 4.30 a.m. Just, you know, hang out, just wait in line, and and you'll be good. So we're like, okay. So we get in line, waiting, waiting, waiting. 4.30 comes along. They slowly, dude, I'm talking at a snail's pace, open security. And they let us slowly start going through. Our flight, mind you, is at 6.10, 6.10 departure. It's 4.30 right now. 
So we're going. Swear to God, an hour goes by before we finally get through security. So now it's 530, and our flight to leaves at 610. It's starting to board. And I was like, well, okay, good thing we got through security. Like, we're, we're in the clear. We're going to the gate. Turns out, at the Toronto airport, if you're flying international, they do the immigration and customs stuff there, like in Toronto before you leave. And so we're now, again, stuck in this huge line. Literally the hour's worth of people that were in front of us in security are now an hour's worth of people in front of us at, uh, at customs and immigration. I, I swear to God, they have two officers, cus- immigration officers that are actually working. And we, there's nothing we can do. Like, you know, we were at the airport two, two hours early, but it's not our fault that they didn't open security until 4.30. Um, so we're just waiting, like trying to do our thing. Honestly, starting to freak out a little bit because we're like, damn, we're going to miss this flight. And then it's like, how do we get to D.C.? Back, you back know? to square one. Yeah, back to square one. And um, we realized that there are a bunch of people behind us who are on the same flight as us. And we're, so that makes me feel a little bit better. I'm like, they can't leave all of us, you know? Yeah, um, for sure. No, and so there's no way. Yeah, it's like they're not going to leave all of us and then rebook all of those people. It's not going to happen. So it makes me feel canceled. a little bit better. I did my flight did get canceled, so I'll never say it, never. <laughs> yeah, your, yours <laughs> they, did. They did. So. But so we we finally get through immigration and customs. Mm-hmm. I swear to God, dude, we boarded the flight at six twenty. Remember, the flight was supposed to take off at six ten. It didn't. We boarded the flight at six twenty. The second we sit down, they say, "All right, we're gonna wait for about five more minutes for the people that are still stuck in immigration, and we're gonna take off." And we were the last two people on that plane. Um, all the other – remember I said there were still a bunch of people. There were probably six or seven people behind us in line who were still waiting. None of those people made the flight. We were the last two. Damn. And so, I mean, it worked out. But, like, dude, this entire – in terms of traveling, this entire Toronto trip was so stressful. So hmm. um, that, that kind of leads me into my last call. Which is, if you're going to travel right now, travel domestically. Domestic travel, it's great. Especially, you know, if you're vaccinated, you're following all the rules, whatever. Like, domestic travel, fantastic. Have a great time. You know, it, it, I feel like 2020, 2021, everyone's been stuck inside. Like, now is the time to, to explore a little bit, live yeah. a little bit, have some oh, yeah. fun. Been but, doing uh, that, son. Been doing that, but yeah, for sure. Nah, yeah, I know if, you have. But but if they haven't, but totally international. Agree. Oh no, no shot. International travel. I will not be stay flying clear, internationally. Stay clear. It's mm-hmm. it is uh it is too difficult right now. Yeah, that's a pain. So that's damn, my last call. Damn, that, what, what's yours, man? My, dude, my last call is uh, yeah, dude. Ali, uh, Alex continued a last call from the other one, and mine is uh, dude. This has been such a fun conversation because. Look at us, like, dude, all the topics, like, I've written them down. I don't know how I'm going to break up the chapters. We're an hour and a half in, bro. Dude, I'm just saying, like, but this has been awesome because, like, we're taking this away and we're like, damn, you know, there's some stuff out there that, you know, not just, like, you, my friend, thinks about, but, like, we, there's a lot to consider when uh, interacting with people. We focus on our day-to-day, all that mm-hmm. stuff. So I think if you can walk out of a conversation, even though we can't, like – um say like, you know, grab a beer after this and like hang out or whatever. But it's like, it's just yeah. fun to be able to do this stuff, dude. And I, I, I continue to want to iterate that, like reiterate, um, like the importance of just hanging out once in a while. We're ta- it, it takes time. Yep. Sure. There's other things we can do. Um, but, uh, this is so much fun, bro. So my, my last call hey, continues out is like, uh, uh, hanging out and, 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 and getting those ideas out there and, 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 and trying to find uh, sure, common man. ground, bro. So that's it. That's what we have. Sure. Episode 62, almost an hour and a half, people. Thank you for joining us for the this The Jerome November. and Daniel Show. Yeah, November 4th, uh, 2021. We are deep, deep into uh, this second season. Uh, we will wrap it up uh, in, in you know over the last uh, – month uh two months that we have 
um, newsletter to come out uh, this weekend for sure. Well, uh, yeah, no, I will uh, make a personal commitment to get that that rolling. And <laughs> um, thanks all for for joining us. If you thought we were a bunch of psychos or you think we're you know the next prophets, uh, let us know. We are on Twitter, Instagram, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, take take some time. Uh, we're very curious to see uh, if if anybody's out there listening, watching, pissed off, happy. It'd be fun to get some reactions. Whatever, man. So, Whatever. All right. We got big things coming. Yes, yes, sir. Cheers. Bye.